Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today I'll be doing a problem of the week. For the full problem of the week, uh, problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description on the video if you're watching this on our YouTube channel. If not, you're probably seeing this on Facebook or on our blog, in which case the link should be readily available there. So this week's problem of the week asks you to calculate a summation, which I have here, in terms of n. So here we have the summation from k equals 1 to n of 1 of k times k plus 2. So we don't have any formulas readily available for us to easily calculate the summation just like this. But we do know that we can do a partial fraction decomposition in order to get this into two, different, two separate fractions. And we can do that using the linearity of the summation. So the first step here is we want to break down 1 over k times k plus 2 into two separate fractions. So I'll do this just as follows. So we have 1 over k times k plus 2. And we want to get this equal to two separate fractions, a over k for some a plus b over k plus 2 for some b. So in order to do this, we're going to get a common denominator here by multiplying a times k plus 2 and b times k. And then we'll set those numerators equal to this 1 over here in order to solve for a and b. So we can do here, I'll just write this over here, a times k plus 2 plus b times k equals the numerator over here, which is 1. So now distributing out the a, we have ak plus 2a plus bk equals 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these together in terms of powers of k and set them equal to powers of k over here, the coefficients. So what I mean by that is, see here we have ak plus bk, so we can do a plus b, taking the coefficients of the k, and there's no k terms over here, so this is equal to 0. And now we take the terms without a k, which in this case is just 2a, and we set this equal to all the terms over here without a k, which is just 1. So now we have a equals 1 half, and bringing that over here, we can see that that would imply that b equals negative 1 half. Okay, so I'll just write these over here so I can erase all of that. So we have a equals 1 half, and b equals negative 1 half. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this a equals 1 half and b equals negative 1 half and I'm going to plug it into what we had over here over the, with the a plus b. So we can say now that the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over k times k plus 2 is exactly equal to the sum same bounds, k equals 1 to n of a, which is 1 half, times 1 over k, plus b, or plus the sum, excuse me, sum from k equals 1 to n of negative 1 half, which was the b coefficient, times 1 over k plus 2. So now, I did that using the linearity of the summation, but now I'm going to bring the 1 half and the negative 1 half in front outside of these summations here. So I'm just bringing out the constants here, and then I'll have the minus 1 half times sum from k equals 1 to n of, I suppose I don't need parentheses here, of 1 over k plus 2. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write out, first, you know, write out an expression of these terms using um, addition in order to see that we'll, we'll end up getting some cancellation along these terms. So we have here 1 half, and then as you see, we have the sum from k equals 1 to n. So the first term is going to be 1 over 1, and then as we increase, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. Plus, and then this will be all the way up to 1 over n, because we have the sum from k equals 1 to n. And then here, 
I'll write this down here. We have minus 1 half from this term here times the sum. So 1 over k plus 2, k also goes from 1 to n here. So when k equals 1, we have 1 plus 2 in the denominator. So that'll be 1, plus, 1 over 3, excuse me, plus 1 fourth, so on and so on, up until we have 1 over n plus 1 over n plus 1, plus finally 1 over n plus 2. So now we, what we can see here is we have what's called a telescoping sum, which means that we have 1 half times all of these terms here, and we have negative 1 half times all of these terms here. So any common terms inside of these parentheses will cancel out because we have the negative sign here and the, co and the constant on the outside is the same. So as we can see, we have the common terms here are 1 third added up all the way to 1 over n, which we also have down here. So I'm just going to cancel out these. And what we're left with here is 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 and then 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 2. So now, I'm going to rewrite this with all these terms canceled out, so it's a little bit easier to see. So we still have a 1 half here on the outside from here. And then we have 1 over 1, which equals 1 plus 1 half. So 1 plus 1 half. And that's all that's left of this, because the rest of it all canceled out because of the common terms here. And that what remains here is we have minus 1 half times 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 2. So I'm going to simplify here inside of these parentheses. 1 half times 1 plus 1 half is going to be 3 halves minus 1 half. And I'm going to get a common denominator, denominator here of n plus 1 quantity times n plus 2 quantity. So the numerators are going to be n plus 1 plus n plus 2 after we get the common denominator, all over n plus 1 times n plus 2. And now all that's left is we just have to simplify to get our final answer. Okay, so we have here 1 half times 3 halves, which is 3 fourths minus 1 half times n plus 1 plus n plus 2 is going to be, so collecting the n terms, we have n plus n is 2n, and 1 plus 2 is 3. And in the denominator, we have n plus 1 times n plus 2, which is going to give us n squared plus 3n plus 2. So this here is going to be our final answer in terms of n. So we have just simplified this summation here into something that's easier to deal with in terms of n. And it, we were able to do this because we had a nice telescoping sum which allowed us to collapse many, most of these terms inside the parentheses here because of the one half and negative one half. So for more math videos, or for more problem of the week videos, I should say, you can visit our playlist here. For to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can click here. And you can visit us at centerofmath.org to see more affordable textbooks and more math information. Thank you for watching.